Hi again. I'd like to continue the discussion of Parse here. <clears throat> In the first video, I, you know, I introduced Parse. Um, hopefully you made an account on Parse and created a new project and maybe, you know, added a couple records to it and a couple columns. And now, you know, we did that sort of manually behind the scenes. What I'd like to do now is I would like to um, do the same thing from a web page. So that'll show you how we can connect the web page to the database that we've created here. Okay, and uh, to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my dashboard here. So I'm logged in at Parse, and then I'll go to the dashboard. And this is the app I'm using right here. It's called Test Number Four. Okay, and what I want to do, and there, there's other ways to do this. You don't have to go through these steps to make this work. But what I'm going to do here just to get started is I'm going to use the Quick Start Guide. Okay, and you can click on Quick Start here, or you can click on the Quick Start Guide. So I'm going to click here, though, on Quick Start. And Parse is going to sort of walk me through setting up the project. Okay, and you, you'll see after we're done with this, it really doesn't do a whole lot. Um, you could write all the code that they give you yourself in, a, in like a minute or two. So it's not a big deal. You don't have to do these steps every time. So what I want to do is I want to create an an a project that is a data-driven project. So I'll click on data here. And then, uh, you know, you can choose what format you want to make your project for. So it can be a mobile, a desktop, a web app, Unity, or a PHP. I'm going to choose a web app. And then you can either create a new project or add parse to an existing project. Well, I haven't created anything, so I'm going to start with the new project. And then this is what Parse gives me. So it you can download your default, you know, blank JavaScript HTML project here. I'll click on that. And then it'll download the project for me. And it just gives me an HTML file and a folder with a couple CSS files in it. And that's it. Okay. And I'll just leave this here and we'll work in this folder. Um, let's open this file up and we'll take a look at it. I'm going to open this up with brackets. I kind of like this editor here. And you can see this is just a simple HTML file. Okay. So there's a couple things in here. Uh, you know, we got the doc type, the head tag, and then there's the title. And then after the title, there is a link to the style sheets. And then there's two script tags here. And the first one links to jQuery through the Google CDN. And then the second one links to the parse library. So this loads parse from parse's CDN. Okay. So the CDN is the content delivery network, and that's essentially, you know, the JavaScript files on the internet. So it's it's loading the jQuery library from Google's, you know, server. And then here we're loading the parse library from the parse server. Okay. And then after that, there's a little bit of HTML here. So there's a, you know, an H1 and a paragraph and a list and some other stuff here. And then at the bottom, right at the bottom here, there's a little script tag. And in the script tag here, there's parse.initialize. So to get started with parse, you got to call parse initialize, and you're going to pass your application ID and your JavaScript key. Okay, and then, you know, here's a little bit of parse code that creates a new object called test object. Okay, so essentially this is a class called test object, and then it creates an object that'll go into, or a row that's going to go into the test object class. And then it gives it a property of, or a, a column of foo, and a, you know, the value for that column is going to be bar. Okay. So, you know, this doesn't really do anything useful. You know, it just makes a, a table and puts a record in it, okay? You know, so essentially, you know, we'll, we'll do this in a moment, right? When you load this page, it's going to set up parse, and then it's going to create this class. And, you know, since I'm going to be using this test for project, to go back to my project, I'm going to click on core right here. And there's my project, my existing project, right? And uh, what this would do is it would create a new class called test object, like as if you click the add class button, and then it'll 
you know, just like this one says post, it'll say test object here. And then right here, it's going to say, okay, well, let's make a new object from test object. So that's going to be a record in the table or a row, right? And then it's going to add a column. You know, this property here is going to be a column, right? And then the value in that column for the new record is going to be bar, okay? So you'll see, I know it sounds a little weird right now, but you know, you'll see how this works. It's actually it's actually easier than than you might think. Let me go back here for a moment and uh, get to the second line here. So I downloaded the project files, and the second thing I need to do is it's showing me my application key. Okay, so my application keys are these two strange numbers right here. So I'm going to copy this first one and paste it into the application ID. You can actually just copy this whole line because you can see that's parse.initialize with, you know, the just fills in the application key and the JavaScript key. I'm just going to copy the, the two keys and paste them. Okay, so I want to paste them here and here. Okay. And then I'll save. So you do the same thing. And then what we'll do is we'll open this page in the browser and see what happens. Okay, now like I said, it's going to make a connection to parse, you know, verify the keys so it knows what account you're using and what database it should be working with. And then <clears throat> here when we say parse object extend and then we name, you know, we set a name here, that's going to be the name of a class right, or a table you could call it, and uh, then it's going to create a new object for that table, okay, and that object's going to be a row, right, so, and then, you know, here it'll set the field for that row and, you know, give it a property or a, a value here of bar, it'll be a string, right, because this is a string. So um, just like we created the title and we set the string, we set it to type string and then we typed a value in it. Okay, so let, let's give it a try. So uh, so let's uh, you know I'll just drag. I saved this file here. Let me make sure I save that right. And then I'll drag the file into the browser and put it in a new tab here. And then it says, "Hey, you're ready to use Parse." Blah blah blah. And you know it doesn't really look like anything happened. But actually, when I go back here, if I refresh. You can see now there's a new class here called test object, and there's one record. Okay, and when I click on that record, you'll see it's got a, a column called foo, and the value is bar. Okay, so when I look here, you can see, you know, that's what happened, right? We, we made a new, I mean, it's hard to tell really that that's what happened, but this is, this is what's going on. You know, you say parse object extend, and then you name a class that you want to work with. And then parse creates that class. And then if you want to add a row to the class, you say new test object or new name of the object that you created here. And then it'll create a row. And then you'll say save. And you can you know, create a JavaScript object with properties and set those, the values for those properties. Like I could say property name here is foo. And that'll create a column. And then I can set the value to bar. And there you go. Okay, now if I was to refresh the page here again, it would create a second record in the table. There would be two records in the test object table, and they would both say bar right here. And that's not very useful, right? So we want to do more than that, and we will. Um, let's just do one little experiment here. So let me break this up just a little bit here and point out that um, really what's happening is when we created the test object here and we said save, that's the point where the information is sent to the server. And they're using sort of a, a shortcut here to include properties, and that's fine. Um, I'm going to rewrite this, and we're going um, to redo this here and kind of take a closer look at it. So I, I like what I have here, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to add a record to the post table and add a new post to my project. Let's actually bring those up. So right now I have two posts, but I want to add a third post. But I want to do it through the web. And I'll do it with a, um, with a uh, 
a form later so you can actually do it through the web page but for right now we'll just do it through the JavaScript so what I'm gonna do is is my table here is called post so I'll type that name in here and then just to make it clear to me I'll make this variable that holds a reference to that post class I'll, I'll call it post also okay and then I want to make a new post here so I'll, I'll maybe I'll call this new post and what we'll do is we'll make a new instance of the post class okay and then what we're gonna do let me actually get rid of this thing right there right then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a property on our new post so this is another way it's a little different from their example but I think this is a little more clear so I'm gonna do it this way I'm gonna say new post dot set okay and my table has two fields that I want to set title and content so I'll say title comma and then I'll say um, post from website okay so this post came from the website and then I'll say uh, new post and you can set as many properties as you like this is a little kind of like longhand compared to the first example right and so this property I'm gonna set is content and that's the name of the column here so I want to put a value in this new object or or row that we're gonna add and I'll say um, this content came from the web okay and now to save the post what we'll do is we'll say new post dot save okay and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put an object here a JavaScript object so I use the curly braces and then I'm gonna say success colon function comma error colon function okay so there we go right so you gotta make sure you get all your curly brackets and your commas in the right place there but essentially we're creating a JavaScript object here with two properties success and error and then the value for these properties is each a function okay so what's gonna happen is when we save the post parse is gonna reply to us and say you know it, it's either gonna call on the success function or it's gonna call on the error function so if it calls the success function then our our new object here this new post was successfully added to the database if it calls the error function it'll return an error message to us telling us why you know hopefully why the the new post was not able to be added to the uh, to the database so what I'll do here is I want to um, to add some line returns there let me kind of make this read nice here right so there we go so I got save success error right and the error function will take an error object as a, a property right so we can say you know console.log and then what I want to do is I want to log the error message and so this error object um, it has a property called message and that'll be the message from the server so if I made a mistake the server will will reply to me with the message okay so anyway so I've got my code here and I've got it all written here I'm gonna make a new post I'm gonna set a property called title that'll be a column here and this will be the value and then I'm gonna set the property called content and that's gonna be this column and this will be the value and then we should have another row here after I refresh this page and then you know actually you know calling new post dot save is what's gonna create the new post right so let's give it a try let's go to our website here and then we'll refresh our page hmm I got an error let's check it right let's go to our console here 
Oh, no errors. Maybe it did work. I, I thought we should have saw the message at the bottom, but uh, let's go check it here. So, you know, if you make a change to the database and you want to see it on the website, um, you'll need to either refresh this page or click the refresh button right here. Oh, look, it looks like it worked. So there's my new post right there. The title was post from website. Content is this content was blah, 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 right? So, um, so there you go. You know, that's how we would send data from, you know, from a web page to parse.